Reimagining Success, episode 226. You're listening to the Reimagining Success podcast, where we help you design a business and a life that allows you freedom from the nine to five. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg, ex-corporate good girl, now a business mentor and coach, author, mum of two, and I'm here to help you create more freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment. Now let's get started with redefining success outside of the nine to five. Hello, and today we are talking about one of my favorite topics, which is flexibility. It's something I've always talked about in terms of leaving the nine to five and creating more freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment. And I 100% believe that having your own business, working for yourself, is the best way to achieve this, if that's something you want to and can do. However, the good news is that in a post-pandemic working landscape, flexibility has actually become a very real possibility in fact, an inevitability within the corporate world as well. Now, of course, there are companies, and I I see this a lot on LinkedIn, and I see people calling it out who are paying lip service to flexible working. So beware of job descriptions that say, you know, flexible working, but then actually they're demanding really specific office days. They don't let you work from home. They don't allow you to have the flexibility that works for you. Because, of course, flexibility can look different for different people. It's very personal. And I'll talk about this in another episode soon. But there are generational differences, actually, in expectations. We've got the famous Gen Z, Generation Z, I suppose we should say, in in the UK, um, who want something different, actually, in terms of what they're expecting from their career as a whole. In fact, we're seeing the shifts happen in all generations, but certainly it's it's happening most of all in younger generations who are coming and they don't want to, you know, stay all night in the office, fair enough. They don't want to sacrifice everything else. They want to have balance in their life. And that's, you know, that's something that certainly will change the landscape of work in the future. So different generational expectations, also different life stages. I remember now years ago when I was young and enthusiastic, <laughs> I remember a new mum at um, at the company I was working who told me, you know what, I'm actually quite happy to leave at 5.30 because she just wanted to go home and, and be with her daughter. And I was appalled, if I remember correctly, by her lack of ambition. I thought, my goodness, what a strange thing. She doesn't want to be promoted. You know, she's been here longer than me and I'm now getting promoted before her. I just found it really odd. Now, I work three-day work weeks. I finish at 5.30 latest to pick up the kids from nursery or to prepare dinner. And that's my reality. It doesn't mean I'm not ambitious, but it does mean I have other priorities. Flexible working when I initially quit my job was to do with being a digital nomad, as it were. I was traveling the world. I wanted to be completely location independent and work fully virtually. Flexible working was was also fully virtual during the pandemic, right? We couldn't go into the office for those of us in, in jobs. Flexible working now that I've left London and for many of my parent friends who are still in jobs means actually being able to work from home when they only commute into London once or twice a week. Flexible working as a parent looks very different to flexible working as, you know, a a digital nomad. And maybe, I'm not going to rule this out because I know they exist and I, I'm uh, a little bit jealous of them. No, <laughs> I very much admire them. But people who are combining those two things, right? There are parents who are traveling the world with their children. So, you know, those are just a couple of very simple examples. But flexible working means very different things. It can mean remote working, working from home, working from anywhere. It can be flexible hours and so on. So the key question for you, and that's the point here, is what does flexibility need to look like for you? What do you want it to look like? So whether you're an employee, an employer of yourself or of other people, it's really important to reflect on this because flexibility is a given now, okay? Working from home, you know, it's not reasonable to demand that employees are in the office every day. So if your employer is doing that, employee, employer, this is quite a tricky episode. (laughs) If your employer is demanding that, then I would rethink maybe where you're working. Obviously, there are some industries, some functions that are more limiting. Having said that, in my interviews with um, HR directors in the past few months, I was informed of some really inspiring examples where they were able to bust some myths about, you know, people working in the plants, for example. There are still some roles where 
it is possible to have flexible working. So that's really exciting. So don't assume that it's not possible. You know, oh my gosh, I'm in a sales role. I've got to be there all the time, whatever it is, that there can be creative solutions. And again, flexible working can look like something else. I listened to a podcast um, a while ago that was talking about different ways of doing the four-day work week. And even that seems like, oh, of course it's the same, but it's not. It could be different four days for everybody, right? There could be, uh, you know, certain days you have to come in for meetings. It could be some of the companies were making it a a reward, actually. So you only got the the fifth day off, as it were, if, um, if you hit your results and so on. So flexible working can mean lots of different things. Key question for you, what does flexibility look like for you? What do you want it to look like? So what are your working days and hours, right? If you look at the year, in fact, what are the days, weeks, months that you want to work and not. I also interviewed someone, hopefully that's coming up, if not already on the podcast, but soon, who was working term time. She runs her business term time, which I find very appealing. Now, as my daughter's going to start school in September, I suddenly look forward to um, half term and long summer holidays. So can I design my business and my program so that my clients are aware that you know, the the calls and and uh, and high intensity, at least, is happening during term time. That's a really interesting question that I'm thinking about. So working days, working hours, term time, holidays, working from home, working anywhere, working in the office. Again, coming back to the generational differences, very simplistically drawing people with a broad brush here, but actually... I would imagine, I would assume, and and also I've heard this from actual studies, that youngsters want to be in the office and have that social connection. They want mentoring and coaching. They need that support. They need to build their career capital and be seen. Whereas those of us who have built that career capital, who are known in the company, respected for expertise, everyone knows that I'm a hard worker and I do my job and so on, it's easier for me to be home. Plus, I already have friends and family and I'm busy and I don't need to necessarily be in the office to have that office banter. I've got other things to do now. Boo-hoo, that sounds very sad. But you know what I mean, that those generational differences can really play into that as well. Uh, People without families, um, people who really prioritise that connectedness and and sense of belonging actually do want to be in the office certain days. So that's, that's really important to identify as well. So as an individual, what does that flexibility look like for you? Obviously, there are then sort of one off periods as well. It could be sabbaticals or um, parental leave. Uh, There's so many topics now, isn't there, in terms of menopause, periods, uh, tragic things as well, of course, illnesses and so on, but but, um, miscarriages and mental health days and so on. Those are all such important topics to consider. And they may be relevant to you. They they may not yet. Fingers crossed, God forbid, that they, they will be in the future. Unfortunately, menopause, I think, is inevitable for us as women. But just because it's not affecting us right now doesn't mean it isn't a consideration, right? So if it's an employer who is very open and amenable to these things, then I think that's really valuable, even if right now we might think, yeah, I don't need any of those things. So as an individual, what does flexibility need to look like for you? As a company or as an employer... How do you, and I know this is the critical question, how do you balance that all-important sense of belonging, connectedness, culture, not to mention productivity, team effectiveness, and so on, with the flexibility that everybody is now demanding, right? So that's a really key question for your employer. And they need to be really intentional about when and why they're asking people to be in the office. Because I I heard of a case of a a mum who, you know, travelled in, I think a two hour commute to the office uh, just to be told that the meeting she was there for was cancelled. That's not the experience we want our employees to have. It's certainly not something I'd want to do. Um, You know, so we need to be making sure that, of course, we value those moments when the team comes together. We need creative brainstorming. We need team updates, connection, team building, even Christmas parties and so on. But really understand why we're asking that, making sure it's working, and then allowing for the different types of flexibility that people are are wanting and needing for their own particular personal situation. In fact, just popping on here to the UK government site, obviously I know you're international, um, but UK 
government says the following, flexible working is a way of working that suits an employee's needs. For example, having flexible start and finish times or working from home. All employees have the legal right to request flexible working, not just parents and carers. It's making a statutory application. Employees must have worked for the same employer for at least 26 weeks to be eligible. Employers must deal with requests in a reasonable manner. They have to assess the advantages and disadvantages, hold a meeting, offer an appeal process. Now, in terms of flexible working types, there are different ways of working flexibly. And I haven't mentioned all of these, so this is great. Job sharing, that's a really creative thing, right? So two people can do one job and split the hours. I have a friend who did that for a while. So that's something to consider. Working from home, obviously, some or all of the work can be done elsewhere. Part-time is important too, working less than full-time hours. Unfortunately, in the past, we've tended to see people, again, unfortunately, especially mothers, who work four days a week and are paid four days a week officially, but they end up, of course, still doing five days a week because that's just the same work being compressed and that's not okay. Compressed hours, speaking of compressed, working full-time hours, but over fewer days, that's basically the four-day work week, right? It means being more productive, stripping away that waste, not having all those unnecessary meetings, et cetera, et cetera, and getting your job done in fewer days without lots of stress and so on. Flexi time. The employee chooses when to start and end work within agreed limits, but works certain core hours, say, for example, 10 till 4 every day. Annualized hours. The employee has to work a certain number of hours over the year, but they have some flexibility But when they work. These are sometimes, oh, there are sometimes core hours, which the employee regularly works each week and they work the rest of their their hours flexibly. Sorry, I can't read today. (laughs) Or when there's extra demand at work. Staggered hours. The employee has different start, finish and break times from other workers and phased retirement. Default retirement age has been phased out and older workers can choose when they want to retire. This means they can reduce their hours and work part time. So you can see how this can be relevant, not just, and obviously I'm in the, the thick of having young kids, so that's what I'm always talking about, so apologies for that people nearing retirement age as well, individuals, right, or any other reason why you'd want to have staggered, flexi, compressed, part-time, whatever it is, right? So, you know, this is a very simple website in the government, but make sure that you know your rights, of course, when when you're working with an employer. But regardless, again, of, of whether you're still in your job or you'll manage your own business, the key question I want you to think about is what does flexibility look like for you? Because we might all say, yeah, yeah, we want flexibility. But certainly, again, my vision has evolved since initially quitting and being carefree and single and wanting to travel the world versus what it is now. So, you know, it's okay that it will evolve. You might want to check in now and then to make sure it's still what you want. And of course, if you've started a new job that's ostensibly offered certain things, promised certain things, and make sure that they're they're actually delivering on that. And if not, then that's something to follow up on. And yeah, make sure that you're super clear on what it means, because that's where things can go wrong, right? If we're not sure what we want, then of course, we can't ask for it. And we won't notice when we're not getting it. I think it's an important topic. I think it's exciting that it is becoming more possible. And even as I said, inevitable within companies too. I'm not beholden to, and I know most people, many people, um, won't quit their jobs. Although I imagine that that many of you on this podcast will or have quit their job. Um, but certainly it's, it's amazing that this is becoming possible for people who, who still want to be in that corporate environment, but to have that flexibility being possible within, yeah, within the benefits of also having the stable salary and so on. Now, we did talk about career cushioning last week, so don't forget that as well. The stable salary and secure job is not always what it seems, um, but certainly I think this is a really exciting development. So that's the question we're asking this week. What does flexibility, flexible working look like for you? I'd love to hear your thoughts. You can email me at podcast at onestepoutside.com or please share on social media and I'd love to hear what you think flexibility could or should look like for you and for other people. Thanks so much and I'll see you next week. Bye for now. If you're finding yourself stressed, torn between your work and your personal life and at risk of burnout, whether you're in a full-time corporate job or working for yourself, and even or maybe especially if you are successful from the traditional perspective of job title, salary, income, then now is the time to make some changes. It is absolutely possible, I believe and know it is possible to have a thriving career, a thriving business, and also have time for everything and everyone else that matters in your life. Get in touch to book a free consultation to discuss how we can work together to help you reshape your business, reshape your priorities so that that business, so that your career 
fits around those priorities in your life rather than trying to make it work the other way around. So you can book that free call at onestepoutside.com forward slash call and I look forward to speaking to you.